My History of Sonic the Hedgehog. It all started when I was about 6 to 11 years old. This was during the time when I used to endlessly watch loads of videotapes. No matter what it was, whether it was animated Disney movies, Thomas the Tank Engine, Fireman Sam, Pingu, Postman Pat, I used to watch loads of tapes, no matter how underrated they were, now or back then. And one of them was a tape with four episodes of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, this was the first time I ever knew anything about Sonic. In fact, I didn't even know Sonic was a game series. I never really grew up with video games, unlike every other Sonic fan in the world. The four episodes featured from that particular tape were Two Tall Tales, Big Daddy, Tails' New Home, and Mama Robotnik's Birthday, all in that order. It wasn't the best show that I've seen back then, I mean, for God's sake, Thunderbirds, Ed, Ed and Eddie, and Spongebob were around. But it was entertaining enough for me to enjoy it. But at some point, my parents had to throw away all of my VHS tapes, because everyone was using DVDs now. But at some point, in 2010, we were wondering what we were going to do with my sister's PlayStation 2. Then we had the idea on keeping it in our motorhome, for me to use when I'm bored during holidays. Me and my dad were soon on Amazon.co.uk to buy some new PlayStation 2 games for me to use. And one that caught my interest was Sonic Heroes. It was then that I thought, wait, Sonic has a game? Well, I do remember Sonic and Tails. Hmm, let's see what this is like. And? I really liked the game. Yes, even though I played the PlayStation 2 version of the game instead of the superior GameCube version, I still enjoyed it. But, I didn't start playing the game in the motorhome. I actually first played the game during a family cruise to the Caribbean. But there was more. On the ship, there was a games room which had four Nintendo Wiis hooked up to four different TVs. Two of them were playing Wii Sports, one was playing Wii Sports Resort, but the fourth one was something completely different, and was just a game that I needed, in terms of knowing about Sonic. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. I was playing this game and Sonic Heroes at the same time during the entire cruise. Both games introduced me to all of the characters that I hadn't seen in the show that I had previously watched once upon a time. Knuckles, Vector, Shadow, Amy, Rouge, Metal Sonic. I even had this argument with this little kid about Dr. Eggman. I said, hey look, it's Dr. Robotnik. But then the kid kept saying, uh, no, that's Dr. Eggman. And we were going back and forth, Robotnik. Eggman! Robotnik! Eggman! <sighs> anyway, after the cruise, I wanted to know a little bit more about this Sonic series. I went on Wikipedia, I watched some cutscenes on YouTube, and then at some point, the first trailer for Sonic Generations was released. After seeing classic Sonic running alongside modern Sonic, it got me even more intrigued. It was then that I watched some playthroughs of all sorts of Sonic games, from channels like Smiling Suncake Studios, The Great Club Ends, Brain Scratch Commentaries, Super Gaming Brothers, etc. And then, later down the line, I owned a Nintendo Wii and a PSP, along with games like Mario Kart Wii, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Super Mario Galaxy 2, I also bought Sonic Colors, the Sonic Rivals games, the Mega Drive collection for PSP, which featured Sonic 1 and 2. I even decided to own Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games for myself, since I really enjoyed that game while on the cruise. And then finally, Sonic Generations was released. Since I didn't own an Xbox 360 yet, I decided to buy the PC version of the game, and I really enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed the classic gameplay after previously playing Sonic 2. The modern gameplay was really fun, 
and it introduced me to more Sonic games than ever before. Later, my parents decided to buy me an Xbox 360 for my birthday, and the Sonic games that I bought for the console for the next couple of years were Sonic Generations, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic 06, my brother once sent over me a copy of Shadow the Hedgehog for my birthday. Um, I appreciate the thought on you knowing that I'm a Sonic fan and all, mate, but it's the wrong console. And I even bought Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection, which featured Sonic 1, 2, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic Spinball, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Sonic 3D, Flicky's Island, and Flicky. Also, on my Xbox 360's Game Store, I bought the full versions of Sonic Adventure and Sonic CD. And I've also played the demos of Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic 4 Episodes 1 and 2, and Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. I was still a Sonic fan when games like Sonic 4 Episode 2 and Sonic Lost World were first released. And in between those game releases, I was on YouTube, watching Some Call Me Johnny, The Great Clement, the Sonic Short series, and episodes of Sonic X. But by the time Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal were released, I started to drift away from the Sonic franchise that I loved so much. Though I did watch the whole first season of the Sonic Boom cartoon. I did enjoy the show, it was rather funny, but it made me think Sega was going to focus more on these new designs for the series. So I drifted away to pay more attention to other franchises, like Thomas or Friendship is Magic. But then, E3 2016 happened, and they announced that they were going to release three new types of Sonic games as part of the series' 25th anniversary. I was hyped as hell. First, Sonic Mania. The same company who remastered Sonic CD was going to make a new 2D Sonic game in the style of the Genesis games. My thoughts? Eh, it looks okay. It at least looks better than Sonic 4. Then, Project Sonic 2017. A new 3D Sonic game. It wasn't a new Sonic Boom game, it was going back to the original Blue Hedgehog who doesn't have a neckerchief or sports tape. My thoughts? This looks... interesting. Since this is from the same people who made Sonic Colors and Generations, it should be pretty good. But the dark, apocalyptic setting reminds me of Soliana from Sonic 06. So... I really don't know what to make of this game so far. And the third? LEGO Dimensions Year 3. They announced that they were going to add in franchises like Harry Potter, Gremlins, E.T., Adventure Time, and Knight Rider in this game. But then, the end of the trailer. Gollum spotting what he thinks is the One Ring of Power, running up to it, jumping up to grab it, and then... The iconic ring sound effect. And there was a LEGO minifigure version of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I was excited as hell! They then announced that there was going to be a level pack for Sonic. And I was getting even more excited! Building the tornado and the pointless car from the Sega All-Stars racing games, and the Sonic minifigure looked exactly what I imagined him to look like. It looked gorgeous. And then finally, the pack was released, delivered to my door, and I played through the entire level and the adventure world. And then, all at once, I was officially a Sonic fan again. I fucking love the Sonic content in this game! I mean, LEGO Dimensions is already a great game, with the gameplay, the franchises included, and all of the references from said franchises, but the Sonic content easily kicked it all out of the park. The Sonic gameplay was so much fun and addicting to play, the stages were great, and the references... Oh, the references. Now that I have played and loved the LEGO Sonic stuff, I'm now going back to watching those classic Sonic videos from YouTube. Sonic shorts, some old playthroughs, the Great Clement Sonic 06 review, 
and it's all taken me back to when I was a fan of this great gaming series, a series that revolutionized gaming in the 90s. So, in the final days of 2016, I now say, Happy 25th birthday, Sonic the Hedgehog, and special thanks to all of the Sonic games and Sonic fans on YouTube for entertaining me for so long. <laughs>